Hi, this is Mitch Mitchell of I'm Just Sharing. At least I'm saying that today because I realized that I haven't talked about blogging in a good long time, and it's time that I talked about it. But first, I want to show you something. Dig this. Keep calm and let Mitchell handle it. That's what it says. Okay, let me see. How do you figure these things out? There, there you go. I ordered this shirt off of a site called teespring.com. That's T-E-E-S-P-R-I-N-G.com. I saw an ad on Facebook that actually one of my cousins put up there, and it said, keep calm and let Mitchell handle it. Hey, I figure I'm Mitchell, so I went to the site, and I ordered this one for myself. I ordered a blue t-shirt for my wife, and they just came the other day, and and. My goodness, I love this. Um, this was $39. Hers was, I think, $25. And it's not so bad. And they have a bunch of different designs and sayings, and you can have your name put in it. And I just thought it was so cool. So I'm just throwing that out there. I get no money for that. Uh, it's just something that I like. So, you know, if you, if you get a chance, tell them I gave them some love because I absolutely love this thing. So let's talk about uh, traffic. Um, basically... What happened is that pretty much around the end of the year or the beginning of this year, I started to see a whole lot of posts showing up on Twitter talking about the top 50 blogs or blogs about blogging, top 100, all this other kind of stuff. And my name wasn't anywhere around that. Now, not that I'm necessarily narcissistic, but we all want some accolades. We want people to know who we are. You know, we want a little bit of publicity. And let's face it, my business blog will have been out 10 years come February. 10 years. I'm just sharing has been out seven years. So I'm sitting there thinking, my goodness, how the devil am I not known? Now, I have some pretty big folks who know who I am, but there's a lot of people who have no real clue. And I started to think, well, you know what? It's your fault. It really is because you haven't really been doing any promoting. Sure, you've been writing a lot of stuff. I mean, I'm almost at 1,600 posts and I'm just sharing, and I'm almost at 1,200 on the other blog. And I've got two other blogs, but I don't really promote those all that often. So I sat there and said, well, what could I do? And I realized that I've always known how to drive traffic to my blogs. I just haven't been doing it because I was traveling. You know, when you travel for work, you're working, and you're not really spending a lot of time on your own thing. And I needed to. So I'm going to give you the top three things that will drive more traffic to your blog this hands down. But I'm going to tell you what really doesn't drive traffic to your blog, which is guest posting. I have written tons of guest posts. I've written them on blogs that don't get a lot of traffic. I've written them on some very high traffic blogs. And you know what? They get tons of comments, but almost nobody has ever come back to my blog from a guest post. I don't know why, but probably it's because a lot of people go to those posts and they respect the person whose blog it is without necessarily respecting the person who just wrote this article. I'll tell you the truth. Uh, there's a lot of blogs where I like to go if the person who owns it writes it because I like their style. But I almost never read <laughs> a lot of the guest posts that they have. So maybe that's really what it is. Sometimes I will and sometimes I'll comment. And every once in a while, I may follow along, but truthfully, I don't really read a lot of those guest posts. So if I'm doing that, you got to figure a lot of other people are as well. So what do we have? Let's talk about the first one. Really, it's about promoting posts. Um, I did this thing. I decided that I wanted to get I'm Just Sharing up there a little bit more. I wanted traffic because it had been falling. And like I said, it's my fault. I'd been traveling. I hadn't been promoting, even though I'd still been writing. So what I did is I went through my blog, and I went back you know, we'll say a year, maybe a little longer than a year. And I picked out the top 30 posts that I'd written on the actual topic of blogging. And I started to put them out there on Twitter. Um, and I interspaced it with um, articles, or not articles, with um, quotations from my business blog. Because I knew I was getting close to 90,000 comments or tweets, as it were. And I wanted to have something to give some balance. And people like motivational statements. And it turns out <laughs> that uh, I don't necessarily think I'm quotable until I look at things I've read and realize, oh, goodness, I've said some pretty good stuff. So I balanced out the blogging things with the comments. And I also mixed in sharing a lot of stuff that I already see on Twitter. And I've always done that. So I started putting more of that out there, and traffic started to increase. Now, I know some people are going to say, well, Alexa means nothing or whatever, but it wasn't just Alexa. I noticed it on Google Analytics. I've noticed it in the fact that I get a lot more comments 
on the blog than I was getting there for a while. Um, not as much from some of the return people, but I have some people who are actually commenting more often on more posts. So, you know, it's working. It's only been about a month, and I'm not going to say that it's, you know, blown up. <laughs> Anything like that, I couldn't tell you. But I can tell you that stuff has increased. So that's number one. Number two are doing interviews. Whether you do an interview uh, with someone or whether someone does an interview with you, what ends up happening is that both of you start promoting the thing. Now, here's the thing that um, folks who even tell you, well, you shouldn't over you know, promote something on Twitter or on Google+, Plus, whatever. If it's you who's been interviewed, you're allowed to share that more often because people expect that you're excited and you're happy that someone actually interviewed you and shared what you had to say. So that gives you time to pretty much put that out there a lot and, you know, give people a better opportunity to see it. At the same time, people who did an interview, if they liked it well enough, they're going to promote it. And they want people to say, hey, look, I do these promotions so that, you know, if you like this, I hope you'll let me interview you. So it's not just you doing it, it's now someone else. And number three, blog commenting. Blog commenting works all the time. It just does. And I hadn't done a lot of blog commenting when I was traveling. I really didn't. I concentrated more on the work that I was doing as well as making sure that I was still getting my content out, at least on two of my four blogs. So I really did that, but I really didn't read a lot of other blogs. Well, I started doing it. Now that I'm back home a little bit more, even though I'm, I'm still out there trying to get my next contract, because that's what independent workers do, um, I've been commenting on a lot more blogs, and I've been spreading it around. And some blogs are pretty new that I'm going to, um, and, you know, meeting some new fascinating people. But some are blogs that are in my blog reader. You know, I had about 250 blogs. And one of the shocking things is how many people actually have left blogging <laughs> in the 18 months that I was gone. Uh, that's somewhat weird, but okay, it happens. But a lot of those folks are still there. So I started coming on there. People, hey, Mitch, hey, you're back. All right. You know, some of those folks didn't know I was gone. So that has helped. So really, you know, those three things will drive traffic to you. Now, you're probably going to say, how do you know? Because Google Analytics not only tells you, you know, how much traffic you're getting, but where you're getting it from. And Twitter has moved into my top three when it wasn't even in the top ten. So that's how I know that's working. And you can go and see some of the other blogs that are out there, you know, that somewhat pop in and have replaced some of the other stuff that had just shown maybe one or two or whatever. So it just shows it's working. And then, of course, sometimes you get a new commenter who says, hey, I came here from such and such. And that's always kind of cool because it shows, you know, if you leave good comments on someone else's blog or if they happen to link to you for whatever reason, then that's going to work out in your favor. And there you go. Those are the top three ways that you can get more traffic coming to your blog. Now, are you going to make more money? I, I don't know. <laughs> do you want to? Some of you do. And, you know, we can get into that another time. Matter of fact, I did a really long video, I think, a little over a year ago where I kind of talked about that niche blogging and, you know, setting things up and whatever. And maybe I'll do that topic a little later. So anyway, that's those three things. I just want to mention this real quick. Um, on Wednesday, uh, Wednesday, what is Wednesday's date? Goodness, let's see, what's today's date? Wednesday the 28th. Uh, January 28th at 4.30. I'm doing an interview on Google Plus with a friend of mine named Chuck Price who it basically is in SEO. This is what he does. He helps companies to recover and he gives you know advice on that. And he had the number one article on Search Engine Watch this year or this past year. And I'm interviewing him. And I think that should be pretty cool. And then hopefully, either over the weekend or next week, I'll be interviewing a lady named Marcy Hill, who's written a book talk to, talking about 62 ways to overcome bloggers block. And yours truly has a little portion in there. Not the portion I thought I would have, but you know what? I'm in a book. <laughs> that's, I think that's pretty cool. So anyway, Mitch Mitchell, if I'm just sharing, let Mitchell handle it. Y'all take care.